Hello. Good morning. Hello, hello. Good morning, Lily and Jacob. How are you? Hope you're all good. Good morning if you're just coming in. Hello. Oh, wow, well, we're off to Nigeria today, so that should be pretty good. Oh, yes. Let's see who else have we got here. Good morning, Josh. Good morning, Jay. Hello, Ruben. Hello, Josh again. <laughs> I'm very good, thank you. Hello, Paul. Hello, Lily. Uh, Lilia. Uh, hello, Ibrahim. Hello, Jack. Hello, Ibrahim again. Hello, Nico. <laughs> I'm very good. Oh, I'm being made confused by the chat this morning. Good morning, Stefan. Hello, Dan and Joe. Good morning. Woo. Yeah, so today we are continuing our alphabet of uh, the world, the world's countries, I guess. Um, by having a look at N, and N is for Nigeria. So we're back to Africa today. Um, we're in West Africa, and we're going to be looking at some uh, cool Nigerian things. Oh, yeah. All right. I've just got to make sure that my board is in the right place so I can actually use it. Ooh, there we go. I'm full of, like, technical glitches this morning, it seems to be but hopefully it'll all come together. Hmm. Let's see who we got. Uh, ah, cool, Ibrahim's uncle is from Nigeria. That's cool. Have you ever been to Nigeria, Ibrahim? And good morning, Callum, how are you? Right, okay. <laughs> nope, not been there yet. It is nearly Christmas, Lily and Jacob, isn't it? Yes, very nearly, so that's pretty exciting. Um, uh, <laughs> uh, Harris wants to go back to to Mexico. Well, Mexico was good, but uh, we've left M, so now it's on to N. Yeah. <laughs> good morning, Eden and Sky. Good morning, Rock. Lovely to see you. All right, let's share up the screen and let's get going. We've got a fair few people in. So that's good. Hello, Joey. So hopefully we can see that uh, behind me is Lagos City. Um, not the capital of Nigeria, but the biggest city in Nigeria. Uh, you don't have to be the biggest to be the capital. Oh, that doesn't, that's not how it works. Uh, good morning, Susanna. Oh, that's very nice. Thank you, Harrison. <laughs> um, oh, dear. Uh, so here, let me just make that a bit bigger. As I say, it's all been a bit of technical glitch this morning. Um, we're in Africa. We're in West Africa, right here, here's Nigeria. Now there's a lot of different countries in Nigeria and well, Nigeria has a lot of neighbors. There's lots of other countries which are right next to them. So we've got Cameroon and Chad to the east. We've got Niger to the north and we've got Benin to the west. Uh, and then to the south, we just have the ocean. So that's quite cool, yeah. Oh, good morning, Noah. Um, it's, as you can see, it's not the biggest African country, but it is a sizable country. Uh, if we try and pull out a bit and compare it to the UK, it's roughly the size of the UK if we sort of scrunch the UK together and put it in a more, you know, even uh, shape, I guess. It's a bit bigger, but that's, that's what we're looking at there. At least on this map, it shows that. Our flag of Nigeria is pretty nice. I like the flag of Nigeria. It hasn't got anything crazy special going on. Um, it's not like some of the other flags. I mean, the flag of Mexico was pretty exciting, wasn't it? We had, you know, multiple animals eating each other. Um, Nigeria has gone for the more simple thing. Just three nice colours. Ah, now, uh, Rock's asking, is the city behind me on the coast? It is. In fact, instead of going into that one, we'll go into a map that actually shows it. So we're going to start with our physical geography here. Here we go. So this is Nigeria. If we zoom in, this shows the borders between the states. And I don't know the names of all the states, unfortunately. 
Uh, but the city that I'm in today, or that is behind me, is Lagos. And yes, Rock asks, is it on the coast? It is right on the coast. We got, uh, you know, um, it's the biggest city in Nigeria. It's got the most people in it. And it stretches, I mean, on this, on this map, it just looks like a dot, doesn't it? But it's got a great big lagoon. So where the, where the sea comes into the land. And it's been built around that and more recently on top of that. Um, it's quite an, quite an amazing city, really. Um, but we'd have to go further north. We'd have to go up into the higher land, away from the coast, and uh, it gets drier as we come this way until we hit Abuja, which is the capital. Uh, that's where the government is centred. That's where a lot of the official buildings are. But it's not the biggest. So there we go. Ah, yeah, Callum was asking, what is the capital? Abuja is the capital. Hmm. Uh, Paul asks, are we going to do GDP per capita? Yes, we are. Of course we are. How could we not? <laughs> um, uh, so this map shows us quite a lot of the different uh, towns and cities, but by, by no means all of them. Uh, there are hundreds and hundreds of little towns, villages and cities as well that are scattered around the country because it's a country with quite a huge population and a growing population. So. Uh, we'll have a look at that when, that when we get to the economic section. But just bear that in mind, that this is not a small country, even if there are other countries that are bigger geographically. This one's pretty big when it comes to the amount of people there. Mm. Okay, our next map here is going to worth a bit more unpacking this one because we've taken um, a lot of the cities out and towns. Uh, and instead, what we're looking at here is the biomes, the different areas of different um, uh, climate, plants, and sort of weather systems. And Nigeria is a wonderful country because it has a lot of different biomes in it. Um, oh, Ibrahim's asking, have I ever been there? No, I've never been to Nigeria. I'd love to go. I've not been to many of these countries we do, to be honest. Um, I'd like to go to them, though. I'd like to go to all of them at some point. Yeah. Uh, oh, Merry Christmas, Noah. Hello, Mystery. Good morning. Um, uh, so let's start from, we'll start in the south and we'll work our way north, but along the coast, we can see there's that city Lagos with its great big lagoon that enters into the land. Um, but this strip here is mangrove. Now, I'm not sure how many of you saw the lesson on Liberia, but we did sort of dig deep into mangroves or a bit deeper in there. But just for those who aren't sure or who missed that one, um, a mangrove forest is a very special kind of forest. It's a kind of forest where the trees are in the ocean. Bit weird. Usually if you put a tree um, anywhere near salt water it will die. It will just die. The, the salt will kill it. You know trees, plants cannot have salt in their root systems because it clogs them up, dehydrates them and they just wither up and die. But not mangrove trees. Mangrove trees have grown and adapted, evolved to be able to take in salt water and uh, make it, well, healthy. Take the salt out and just drink the fresh water and leave the salt particles or the salt molecules uh, out of their roots. So it's kind of incredible. And that means we get a really weird kind of forest. It's a kind of forest where you can have all the standard forest animals you can think of in Nigeria. There's lots of bush babies and things. Um, but you also have loads of fish swimming around the roots. It's kind of cool. Yeah. Um, <laughs> uh, uh, mystery says, Ooh, if I am if I'm in Nigeria behind me, then how and I've never been to Nigeria. How does that work? <laughs> it must be a green screen. It must be. Yes, you, you've seen it. Uh, good morning, Iram. Uh, uh, Joey, you asked what the red area means. We'll come to the red area in a second, but I will, I'll put the key up a bit so you can see a bit better. There you are, so you can see it there, but we will come to that. Um, now, just below the mangrove, and you'll notice that Lagos, the whole city, is in the mangrove. Uh, there's not many trees left there. They've chopped them all down, but that's, that's where it is naturally. Um, if we go a little bit north, we've got this freshwater swamp area. Mm, maybe an ogre lives there. Um, probably not. Maybe. I don't know. Are there ogres in Nigeria? Possibly. Um, I'm not sure where Shrek is set, but there's an ogre in that. I don't think it's Nigeria. Mm. 
Um, a great fish nursery. That's a good point, Jay. Yeah. Uh, Jay says it's a great fish nursery, i.e. it's a really good place for baby fish to grow up because there's loads of protection there because just just like if you're familiar with coral reefs or whatever reefs or whatever mangrove forest they have all these different roots and plants growing which fish can hide in and around and that keeps them safe from predators so yeah that's a really good point jay yeah, yeah i like that um so this freshwater swamp is going to have it, it's not ocean because it's fresh water so it's not salty water but it's very wet um and uh spreads out uh if you were going to walk through there, you probably need a good pair of wellies on because it'd be very squishy and uh, and muddy. And you can see that the uh, the freshwater swamp it kind of follows down uh, what we call the mouth of the River Niger, or at least the delta of the Niger here, because the River Niger is a really big river that comes from way up north. Um, and as it flows down, it picks up a lot of silt and sediment, a lot of nutrients. And then as it comes down to the to the lowland here, it starts to break its banks a bit, starts to spread out. Uh, so that water starts to leave the river and sort of spread out around this blue area uh, before it goes out to the ocean. So it's a very healthy place to be if you're a plant. Lots of lovely nutrients. Um, what's the white hole in the map? Ah, up here. This is a great big lake. So you'll see that the river Niger runs into a lake and then runs out. Now, I can't remember off the top of my head the name of the lake. I did used to know it, but I've forgotten now. It might be on our map in a minute. Um, but the lake didn't used to be so big. But this line here, this black line, has they've built a great big dam, which has forced the lake to grow and restricted the, the flow of water. Um, they've done that to create fresh water for the people that live up in this area. Um, so yeah, a big lake. It starts with a K, but I can't for the life of me remember what the what the what the name is. There you are. Good question. Um, uh, uh, oh, uh, Armani asks, what if you're a human? Is it healthy to live in a swamp? Um, well, it's not massively unhealthy. You, mean, you don't want to stay wet all the time. But yeah, people do live in that area for sure. There's towns and cities and villages. And yeah, so it, it's fine. Um, Ah, now, did it start in the Sahara Desert, the river? The river, oh, thank you, Rebecca, that's a good question. Uh, it starts kind of in the Sahara Desert because it's from Niger, so it's a bit further north. I don't think it's Sahara proper, not the, the sand dunes and stuff. I think it happens a little bit more to the west. Um, that's where it starts, if I remember uh, the top of this, this river correctly. <laughs> um, so we've got that swampy area. Then above that, we have rainforest really really cool i mean we we know about rainforest we had a look at brazil didn't we um so rainforest is tropical jungle tropical forest that's very very wet you know from rain in this case rather than from river flooding um and is home to a lot of different amazing creatures uh, one of the most impressive um in nigeria would be the odd gorilla now most gorillas don't live as far north as uh, Nigeria, but they have been spotted around there, which is quite cool. Um, so, yeah, you, you can find some really cool creatures in Nigeria. Sadly, the rainforest is under threat. It's being chopped down quite a lot for reasons that we'll see later. Um, so a bit like the Amazon rainforest, it is getting deforested. The bad news is that Nigeria has a lot less forest, rainforest than Brazil does or Peru. So it maybe feels it more keenly. Nice gorilla, Paul. Thank you. Yeah. Um, right. We'll go to our uh, red one here. We've just got a little tiny chunk of what we call montane uh, down here in the east, in the southeast. And that's basically it's kind of like it sounds, I guess. It means that it's mountainous. It has mountain vegetation. So instead of like big trees or wide plains of grass, it's got lots of rough scrub growing out of rocks because Nigeria is a pretty flat country. But towards the east, when it starts to, to th this country here on the side is Chad, there's like a mountain range right here with some really nice tall mountains. And so just as we come into the east, we hit that kind of area with mountain mountains. But and if we were going to follow the line, this area of red would actually stretch all the way up here. But that turns into Chad. So on our map, it's not mentioned. There you go. So there's not much mountain uh, or montane uh, 
biome in Nigeria, but there is that little bit. Yeah, but if we went to Chad, we find a lot more montane, very much so. Um, now, the biggest chunk, the biggest biome of Nigeria, as we can see here, is this wonderful light green color on our map. And that's woodland and tall grass savanna. So when we're thinking of savanna, we're thinking long plains of grass. Um, we're thinking, especially towards the north here, a bit Lion King, you know, if, you, if you're familiar with that film. If you're thinking of like the savanna of Kenya or whatever, uh, I, I don't know where that film is supposed to be, but it, it could be in Nigeria for sure. Um, it's that there are plant, there are trees there, but not so many. Um, it's not like the forest where all the trees are packed together. They're a bit more spaced out because there's less moisture and it's, it's warmer. Uh, and as we head north into the sort of, I don't know what you call that, a slightly different colour green. Here we go. Mm -hmm. um, you find short grass savanna, which is that sort of low, almost yellow grass, especially in the dry season. Um, with trees just sort of spread out every now and again, you might see one of those wonderful acacia trees. Um, I'll show you an acacia tree. I hadn't thought to put one of those on. Uh, here we are. Um, if you're a Minecraft player, you'll be familiar with savanna and acacia trees because uh, they go in that game, don't they? But here's our acacia. Um, nice red kind of trunk. Um, and they sort of splay out at the top, really nice and wide. But you'll notice here, this is uh, short grass savanna. Well, no, it's probably long grass savanna right on the edge because we do have a bit more vegetation around. Um, this is the kind of landscape that we're talking about in the majority of Nigeria. Now, there is a little section at the very top. Ooh, hang on, I've lost my chat now. There we go. Did someone mow it? <laughs> That's a good question. No, so uh, it, it refers to how, how the grass grows naturally. So in the the main, the majority of Nigeria, the grass naturally goes, grows long because there's more moisture. Uh, there's quite a lot of rain that comes in the south. But as we go further north, we don't get so much rain. Um, and in both cases, you only get rain in one season of the year, reliably. Um, like in a lot of sub-Saharan Africa, you get the dry season and you get the rainy season or the wet season. And the further north you go, the shorter your wet season is and the hotter your dry season is, which means the water all sort of disappears from the landscape. So no, it's not that someone mowed it. It's that, uh, <laughs> I do like that idea though. I do like the idea that someone paid to go out with a ginormous lawnmower and just mow the savannah. That'd be cool. The soggy season. That's a good name for it, Jay. I like that. Yes, we have uh, the dry season and then we have the soggy season. Yeah, mm -hmm. I go with that. Uh, so yes, in in as it gets further north, the grass gets shorter because it ha doesn't have so much uh, moisture or nutrients. Yeah. Now, right in the very top there, we can see that part of uh, that piece that is yellow. It says here on our uh, map, marginal savanna. The best way to think of that is, well, that's the Sahara Desert. Yeah, we we we've hit um, what is right in the very south might be sort of cracked earth but as we go north and if we were to follow our map above we would end up in you know sand dunes and stuff like that uh, worryingly slightly worryingly in nigeria this part of uh, the biome is spreading so year after year it gets a little bit further down so it might be in a few years oh hang on my pen back it might be in a few years that our yellow line comes down like this or something uh, which is not good news if you live in the green because you could probably have a nice farm in the green and keep your animals but as the desert creeps downwards you won't be able to you won't be able to grow things because there'll just be no rain at all and that's no good so nigeria is changing like most of the world you know lots of different parts of the world are changing at the moment uh, so it'll be interesting to see in the future what happens to that northern bit it could be that one day in like thousands of years the whole of nigeria just turns into a desert but I think, for now at least, are wet. It's very, very wet in the south, so I think it'll be all right. Mm. Uh, here I've got, oh, yes, here I put a picture of these mangrove trees, just in case you weren't familiar, and it's just a nice picture. So, our mango, um, mango, mangrove trees, um, they're kind of spindly, I suppose you call them. These sections here 
are roots. Now we're used to trees with roots that go in the soil. You know, if I look at the trees outside my window, there's a uh, a trunk coming out of the ground. If I was going to dig down, I'd see the roots, but I don't see them above. Um, in mangrove forests, you see them all the time because they kind of hold the trees up out of the water. And as someone said earlier, that's a wonderful place for baby fish to live in peace and harmony um, until the little baby sharks come along anyway. Uh, so yeah, really nice and an important uh, biome. Uh, uh, oh, that's a good question. Susanna asks, why is there long grass savanna in the middle of short grass savanna? So, it would probably have something to do. Uh, down here, we obviously have a patch where the rainforest has given way to savanna. So it might be something to do with the, the shape of the land or the relief of the land, how steep it is. It might be that our rainwater finds its way down into our swampland instead. Up here, I'm assuming it has something to do with the mountains on the other side. So maybe there's some particularly tall mountains here, which uh, caps stop moisture because rain tends to fall before, you know, as it hits mountains, rain falls. Um, it, it finds it hard to get over mountains, <laughs> clouds do. So it could well be that there's particularly interesting mountains here where the rain drops before it reaches those mountains but I'm not entirely sure that's just a, a sort of guess there's something going on there which means that the climate is slightly different in that area it could have something to do with wind patterns or or, or anything like that really um, but my best guess would be it's dropping rain before it hits the mountains that's what I would assume just because I know there are mountains that side hmm. uh -huh. uh Oh, a fisherman. Yes, yes. If the fishermen come, <laughs> the baby fish are also not in a good way, are they? That's true. Uh, so let me pause that for a second and find our animals. Here we go. Oh, I've ended up in Mexico. That's no good, is it? Now, the national animal of Nigeria is one, I think, that we may have had three times it, recently. I think our last three countries have had the same national animal. But here we go. It's the eagle. Um, just like it was in Mexico and just like it was in Kazakhstan. We've got, uh, yeah, eagles for, for the win, I'm afraid. Um, in Nigeria, you get a huge range of eagles. Um, I read somewhere that the, the official title of their national animal is just eagle, but I heard that the black crested eagle is one that you find a lot in Nigeria. Um, but this is just a, a standard a uh, cool picture of an eagle that I chose because I thought it looked kind of menacing. I like the way it's in shadow. Um, so, yeah, the, it's kind of, I know eagles are boring, but it's like, wow, I wish we had a slightly more, uh, a different animal as the national animal because we've had eagles before. Oh no, hang on. <laughs> um, but there are lots of other very cool animals in Nigeria. So let's have a look at a few here. I must have had the Lion King on my mind because uh, feels like uh, feels like we're there, doesn't it? Uh, we've got rhinos. Rhinos in Nigeria are rare, unfortunately, but they do live there. Um, you don't find zebras. Zebras are a bit further south, but hippos, rhinos, lions, warthogs, antelope, that kind of thing. You'll find all these animals out on the savanna, whether it's long grass or short grass savanna, you will find them there. Uh, the rhinos are endangered. Um, for a few years ago, there were worries that there were no rhinos in Nigeria anymore. Uh, but I think recently they have found a few uh, sort of roaming around. And there are national parks in Nigeria. Uh, and that's where this photo was taken, where there are park rangers that look after um, animals like the rhinos. Uh, uh, it, it, uh, uh, Le French chicken. Yeah, the French, the chicken of France. That was uh, an interesting, <laughs> wasn't it? <laughs> uh, the black crested eagle does sound cool, though, you're around. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, yeah. Um, and the sea is in the South Pole. Yeah, that's right. The sea to the south. That's the Atlantic Ocean. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, there are elephants, there are leopards and cheetahs and things like that. I mean, you, you think you know, African animals, most of them you can find somewhere in Nigeria, sort of the classic ones. Um, sadly, the rhinos are endangered, but they are being looked after. I quite like this picture of a warthog down here. Um, 
it, I don't know, there's something slightly uh, frightening about the warthog, at least its face. Not so much that it's ugly. I know some people say they're ugly. I don't think they're particularly ugly. But they do look a bit scary with all those spikes and horns. Um, a Wimberway, a Wimberway, indeed, Jay. <laughs> <laughs> um, and of course, lions are there too. Um, lions, uh, are, even though they're not the national animal of Nigeria, they are a very important symbol of Nigeria. There are great statues of lions in uh, Abuja and Lagos and probably other cities too, um, which the lion is, is a nice representation for Nigeria, at least historically, because uh, Nigeria for a very long time was part of the British Empire and that's where lots of those lion statues came from um, and, <laughs> um, and so the, the lion being the national symbol of England kind of goes well with the fact that there are actual lions in Nigeria it's quite a nice combination um, now a few questions here do they have meerkats that's a really good question I, I mean we need Timon and Pim Pumba don't we let me have a look I'm just gonna have a check because I didn't see uh, meerkats but let me see if I can find out are there meerkats um, hmm. Hmm. interesting let's see uh, I'll do a little search Meerkat, Nigeria. Let's have a look. Ooh. Um, they have, oh, well, there you go. Africa's largest telescope, the Meerkat, launches in South Africa. I don't think that's the same, is it? Um, <laughs> uh, let's see. I cannot, I cannot see that they are in Nigeria, which seems a shame because we need we need a Timon to go with the Pumba, don't we? Um, hmm, maybe there are. Oh, hang on. I've got a map here. I've got a map. <gasps> da -da -da -da. I think they're a bit too far south. <gasps> I don't think we've got as far north as. Uh, as. Uh, Nigeria yet. Let's see. The map I've got is really just showing me Southern Africa. <gasps> oh my goodness. But maybe, maybe, maybe I'll do a bit more research and find out. But I'm going to say for now, there's no evidence that I have of having meerkats in Nigeria. <gasps> oh no. What a shame. Um, uh, do they have tigers? No, Rebecca, they don't have tigers, unfortunately. Tigers live in Asia. Um, so we find tigers in India and Russia, and places like that. Bangladesh, uh, not in Africa, sadly. Um, and that is a good question. I'm going to ask why are these uh, rhinos endangered? And it is mainly poaching, yes. Uh, people kill them to take their horns um, or for use in medicine or because they just want to have a rhino head on the wall. And um, unfortunately, that's led to a position where there just aren't as many rhinos left as there should be in the wild. So the ones that we do find in Nigeria are in national parks where they have humans like this guy walking around, often with guns, uh, to make sure that no one enters the park and no one can steal their rhinos. And it's still difficult because people will try and get in. Uh, and the parks are big. It's not like a play park. You know, when I say park, I mean parks that are the size of, you know, many cities put together so these are huge areas uh with rangers all around them trying to protect the animals but yes it is very sad isn't it for sure um uh there are no meerkats says ibrahim <laughs> thank you <laughs> that's good <laughs> um <laughs> yes nico and then they can be they can go off and be used for for medicine for in some places that's true yeah um now, Abdul and another person, I, I've missed it now, but somebody's asking hyenas. Oh, yes, there are hyenas. Oh, my goodness. Here are some of my favorite photos right coming up now. Here we go. There are definitely hyenas in Nigeria. Um, so these wonderful photos are taken of a group who call themselves the Hyena Boys. Um, and it's kind of like in, in uh, many of the cities, in Nigeria, there's this fashion for having wild animals as pets. And of course, the more vicious a wild animal you can keep as a pet, the more respect you get. So I love this photo of this guy posing with his pet hyena. Um, 
You've got to keep the muzzle on. You wouldn't want to try and keep a hyena without a muzzle because I don't think they can be tamed particularly well. But as you can see with this uh, older gentleman here, he's got his hyena. They always keep them on big metal chains. Um, it seems like a mad idea. Absolutely crazy to have a hyena as a pet because they are so big and so vicious. Um, but there you go. That's what we've got. Um, it's a bit of a status symbol. Um, some in the same group will have uh, giant snakes as pets, like pythons and stuff. Um, some will keep other wild animals. Uh, this guy here rides around on his motorbike with his pet baboon. Just, you know, as you do. Hmm, I'm going to the shop. I need to buy some milk. I'm going to take my baboon with me. Yes, I am. Come on, baboon. You come with me. I can't leave you at home. You're too, you're too cheeky probably so there you go um they definitely do have hyenas and as pets in many cases <laughs> um so ah, i see a lot of people here saying this is mean this is not nice um and i suppose you're right i mean i don't know if it, it, i mean we have in britain we have lots of dogs and things and, our, and cats don't we but they they're all been domesticated they are tame animals that are used to living with people and in houses. Um, oh, uh, Amana asked, can I put a picture of a snake? Let me see if I can find one, yes. Um, so yeah, we would say it probably was a bad idea um, to keep a wild animal as a pet. That doesn't seem okay, does it? Because we keep pets that are, are used to being tamed. Um, in Nigeria, at least this group of guys, they use it as a bit of a status symbol. So um, let's see if I can find a picture of a snake here. Uh, Da -da. Ooh, I can barely type today. Uh, let's see. Now, hyenas are particularly vicious animals. It's it's not. We, we look at those pictures. We think, oh, it's a bit like a dog. They are a bit like a dog, I suppose, but they're very, very different, really, from a dog, because, um, well, for an, for a first thing, they're scavengers, so they will go around here's a picture of like a whole group here we are now i don't know how old or young you guys are but uh this little girl she seems to be too young to be sitting on a hyena maybe that's not safe hyenas they are famously pretty vicious they will eat pretty much anything um including a person there have been many hyena attacks in nigeria and other countries around the world um baboons too can be pretty vicious but you'll notice that the baboons in this picture, they put little football shirts on them. Um, I think it's probably worse being a pet for the baboons than it is from the hyenas. The hyenas maybe don't mind so much. I imagine the baboons, because they're so clever, they probably just want to go. But I don't know. I, I, I've never had a pet baboon. So I'm going to assume that the baboon, the, the baboon? I am a baboon. No, I'm assuming the baboons wouldn't really like to be pets. Um, I personally think they should just let them all go. Yeah. Um, oh, no way. Uh, Ruben says that. Uh, was that a baboon, Ruben, or was it a hyena? Because uh, Ruben's saying that one of these took his dad's shoes when he was a kid. Oh, my goodness. Give me my shoes back. How am I supposed to chase after you with no shoes? Oh, a hyena. I think I'd let the hyena have it, Ruben. Yeah. Did you, uh, you go away, hyena. Yeah, you can take my shoes. Just keep away from me. <laughs> Oh, that's cool. And Abdul Hay has seen a uh, wild hyena in Pakistan. That's very cool. That's very cool. Uh, hopefully they didn't take your shoes, Abdul. Yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> uh, I'm still trying to find a picture of this snake. Let's have a look. Um, yeah, baboons, because they're so intelligent, I don't think um, that they would want to to be pets necessarily. I don't think that would be there. I, I think they enjoy their freedom and they generally move around in groups. So I don't know. Um, I cannot find the picture that I did have of the hyena boy with a snake, but I'll see if I can find a picture of just a cool snake. Here we are. Here we are. Oh, there's a nice one. I'm not sure what kind of snake this is, but it looks pretty cool. A yellow it looks like horned viper doesn't it but a very yellow one that looks quite fun i don't think anyone would keep that as a pet that'd be too difficult unless you had it in like a proper cage mm -hmm. out the way it looks like that one might be venomous to me um 
Uh, da -da -da -da. Strangely, this is a bit of an aside. Oh my goodness. But when I started searching for Nigeria snake, the first result to come up was Nigerian snake soup. So get ready to be grossed out. Here's a picture of a nice bowl of Nigerian snake soup. Mmm, snake soup. Yum. Anyone want to share my snake soup? Probably not. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Lilia would like to share the snake soup. Okay. <laughs> um, uh, oh, Amani says, my friend had a snake, but when I went to his house, it was in the process of, of escaping from its cage. Oh, no. <laughs> uh, snakes are cool. I do like snakes. Uh, Freya says she does not want snake soup. Freya has a pet snake, don't you, Freya? <laughs> it lives in our house. <laughs> Um, so yes you probably wouldn't want to eat it <laughs> uh i don't think I, I i i think if i was going to eat snake soup which i'm not going to i think i'd take the skin off i don't think that looks nice in any way at all not even a little bit Ugh. okay so um we'll leave the animals alone I think they should be left alone, especially the hyenas, the baboons and the snakes in this case. Um, and let's go and take a look at what the government of Nigeria is like. Now, Nigeria is quite an interesting country, sort of historically in terms of government. Um, it's a country that for a long time was ruled over by Britain. So uh, a lot of people there, most people there speak English, um, especially in the big cities. Uh, a lot, all the road signs and things are in English and, and stuff like that. Um, and that means that Christianity is the main religion in the South. Yeah, so most of the southern Nigerian people are Christians. But then in the north of the country, it's a bit different. Most of the people are Muslim. And so it's always interesting to see um, which religious group ends up leading the country. Um, Nigeria is a democracy, so it's voted for. And at the moment, the president of Nigeria is Muhammadu Buhari, who is a uh, of, from the Muslim um, uh, side of the country. Now, in Nigeria, it's always a tricky job trying to keep those two groups peaceful. I mean, they have been historically most of the time, but sometimes the two can rub alongside and they can get into arguments and even, you know, in the very distant past, get into fights. Um, so it's a tough job, being, I imagine, being president of Nigeria having to keep everyone happy. Um, but from what I can tell, and again, I'm not like a political expert on Nigeria, but from what I can tell, Muhammadu Buhari seems to be a fairly popular president at the time, at this time. Um, he seems to have most people behind him, which is good. Um, now, being president of a big country like Nigeria, definitely has some challenges associated with it. As we'll see in the economics in a second, Nigeria is one of the fastest growing countries in the world in terms of population, which means uh, Muhammadu Buhari has a humongous amount of babies in his country. And I imagine that trying to run a country full of babies is pretty tricky. Uh -huh -huh. I mean, it's not just babies, of course. That would be weird if it was just Muhammadu and like five million babies. That would be strange. Um, but yes, uh, it, it would be a tough job, especially since Nigeria is not a massively rich country. There are a lot of poor people in Nigeria um, and there's a lot of them. So, yeah, makes it hard. Um, oh, oh, Lilia. Thank you. Lilia says that the, the snake skin has loads of protein in it. Of, of course. Now, you know what you're talking about. Obviously, uh, Lilia here is a uh, snake connoisseur. <laughs> Um, so uh, Ibrahim asked what religions are there so yeah the, the, the main two religions are Christianity is the biggest um, Islam is the second biggest um, but if you go to the south it's more Christian if you go to the north it's more Islam um, and if you uh, then also because we're still in Africa of course um, there's still a, a sizable number of traditional African religions so people who worship if you were here for the sahara lessons it's really similar to that uh you know people who have shaman and witch doctors and believe in different gods and goddesses and spirits and stuff that's still big in nigeria too um so there's lots yeah um 
Ah, uh -huh. now Rock asks, whichever religion has the most people will always win in case of the presidency. Maybe, but not in this case, because uh, the Muslim population is uh, smaller than the Christian population. I, I don't think Nigeria Nigerians care that much. I think the two religions are so used to sort of rubbing alongside that they don't really, uh, well, with the third religions as well, you know, these traditional African religions, I don't think they care too much about what, what someone's religion is. I, I think they respect each other enough to vote for each other in the in the presidential races. It's not like, you know, we have two very separate groups who sort of scowl at each other from the north and the south. Um, there are lots of different ethnic groups as well in Nigeria. Um, not everyone is the same. I mean, that's kind of obvious because not all people are not the same, are they? But traditionally, if we go back, you know, hundreds of years to loads of different tribal groups, um, the way that they've developed into modern society, they've still kept their, their tribal identities. And so they are ethnically different too. So you might look at 10 people from Nigeria and say, oh, they look similar, but they're not really. They come from lots of different, uh, different parts of the country. And so they have different spins on their religions too. It all gets very, very confusing, as all modern countries do nowadays, because there's always a good mix of people, aren't there? Mm. Um, now, Nigeria is also part of the Commonwealth. Um, I mentioned that it used to be part of the British Empire, used to be ruled by Britain. And today, a lot of those countries that used to be ruled by Britain um, are still connected to Britain politically. It's not in the same way. Um, the Queen of England is no longer the Queen of Nigeria. She still is the Queen of Australia and she still is the Queen of Canada, but she's not the Queen of Nigeria anymore. Some of these countries wanted uh, to get rid of all Britishness, some of them just a bit of it. Um, there are countries that just left completely and are not part of the Commonwealth. But the Commonwealth is a group of countries that are connected through their history, I suppose, the fact that they used to be ruled by Britain and therefore a lot of them have. If they don't speak English, they have a lot of English speaking in them. Um, and so it's kind of a club, a group, if you like, of countries. Um, you may have seen the Commonwealth Games, my, you may have seen the Commonwealth Games in the past, which is a bit like a mini Olympics where just Commonwealth countries play. But the idea behind the Commonwealth is that they help each other stay strong and healthy and safe. So let's say Nigeria was attacked um, by an enemy it could well be that the other Commonwealth countries come to help it. Or maybe if there was a natural disaster in India over here, then the other Commonwealth countries would give money to, um, uh, to, to India to help it, that kind of thing. Um, uh, oh, Rock asks, what countries in the middle of Africa? Um, I suppose the Central African Republic, uh, the CAR, that would be sort of, maybe that would be the center, it's around there somewhere, yeah, yeah. Um, so there's a lot of countries in the Commonwealth. Some of the major ones, we have Canada, we have the United Kingdom, of course, as like sort of the head of the Commonwealth. Uh, and the Queen is still in charge of the Commonwealth. So uh, the Queen will uh, go and meet these leaders of these countries. Um, I don't think she's ever met our current leader of Nigeria, not as far as I know anyway. Uh, she's getting a bit old now, of course. Uh, we've got loads of Caribbean islands all around here, loads and loads of them, yeah. Uh, places like the Bahamas, Jamaica. Um, we've got uh, Suriname down here in the Amazon rainforest. So there you go, a bit of the Amazon rainforest. Um, you'd be quite uh, at home there if you speak English, because that's where they speak English there. Um, we've got Nigeria. We've got our other, other African countries. There's Liberia there. Uh, sorry, not Liberia, Sierra Leone. Um, we've got South Africa and lots of countries around there. We've got India, Sri Lanka. Um, we've got uh, Malaysia. We have Papua New Guinea and uh, Australia, New Zealand. Whew, testing my geography skills, this is, isn't it? Um, and so all these countries are united in the fact that they're kind of British, even though they're not British. Yes. No, they don't have Haiti. That's true. Um, Haiti was a French territory, not a British one. Yes. Um, well, Haiti is a bit strange because it's sort of flip flop between Spain and France, but never Britain. So, no, that's not part of the Commonwealth. Um, yeah, the thing that brings the Commonwealth countries together um, is that they, they they have that common sort of English culture, whether they ask for it or not. <laughs> in most cases, they didn't ask for it, but they have it. There you go. Um, is English the most spoken language in the world? Uh, no. Good question, though, Ruben. I believe I haven't checked the stats recently, but 
I believe it's Spanish is first and uh, Chinese or one of the Chinese dialects is second. I think English is third, the third most common uh, spoken language in the world. But I tell you what, I will give a Google um, to see if that's still the case. Let's have a look here. Um, most common language. Let's see what Google tells us. Oh, oh, it's had a bit of a, a switcheroo. So Mandarin Chinese is now in first place. When I was young, it was Spanish. Uh, Spanish is in second place. English is in third place. And Hindi, uh, which is spoken largely across India, is in fourth. So there you go. Um, there are 379 million people that speak English on the planet. But you compare that to Mandarin Chinese, there are 918 million. So nearly three times as many people speak Mandarin Chinese as speak English. Wow, there you go. Uh, the reason I suppose we don't notice that so much is because uh, the majority of those Mandarin Chinese speakers live in China, whereas English langu language is spread across the world because of the Commonwealth. Oh, and there's 460 million in Spanish rock. There you are. So yeah, Spanish is still quite a bit more popular than English. Um, there you are. Uh, has the has the scene has the Queen seen Trump? Yes, the Queen did meet Donald Trump. He came to England a few years ago, didn't he? Um, and she was a bit rude apparently because she wore a piece of jewellery that traditionally queens only wear um, when they're not very happy. Uh, now, of course, Donald Trump didn't notice that, but it was a bit of a a royal slight against him. Um, yeah, she wore the bad jewels basically. Yeah, did give him that respect. <laughs> Um, and English has 379 million. There you go. There you go. Um, so yes, yeah, Mandarin's first, Spanish is second, English is third. All right. So we're now going to come to the moment that we've all been waiting for. Drum roll, please. It's the economy and development. Woo Yay. And here we have the GDP per capita for all the countries we've looked at so far, I, I might have to start changing this up because it's getting it's getting harder to read each time. It's getting smaller and smaller. Um, I'm not sure if we're going to get to 26 countries um, <laughs> with it still being readable, but I'll, I'll work on that. Um, so here we've got all the countries we've seen so far. And what we do to work out the GDP per capita is we take the amount of money that the country has made in a year, in a typical year, and then we divide it by the number of people who live in that country. And the higher the number, the better indication it is that that's a rich country. It's not a perfect indication because it could be that in reality, one person in that country has all the money and everyone else is really poor. And there are countries that are similar to that for sure. Um, but it is a good indication of, of roughly how wealthy the country is. So still in the top place, uh, I'm afraid Nigeria is not knocking this one off. Denmark is up there with just over $60,000 per year per person if you shared it all out. I mean, that's a very wealthy country indeed. Um, oh, hang on. I'm zooming in and out of the wrong thing. Uh, United Kingdom is up to around $43,000 per person per year. Um, it's all, always done in American dollars because that's just the way that we make it all fair between the countries. Um, and Nigeria, though, isn't doing too great. We're hovering around the 3,000. So to give you an idea, 3,000 compared to 43,000, your average Nigerian person, if we divide it up fairly, would have 40,000 less dollars a year than the average person in England would. Oh my goodness, that doesn't sound good, does it? Um, still not the poorest country we've looked at though. Um, Nigeria is firmly in the emerging economy uh, group. If you, if you haven't seen this before, uh, we have developing countries, which are the very poorest countries on earth. They're the ones without adequate, um, uh, goods and services often so maybe a lack of hospitals a lack of schools a lack of houses things like that uh, the poorest countries in the world we've got three of those we've looked at so far uh, Haiti Ethiopia and Liberia two of which are also in Africa of course Ethiopia and Liberia then we have the richer countries um, oh for some reason I've, I've accidentally put Latvia on here I'm not sure why we haven't done Latvia I must have <laughs> hit the wrong button there we are so then we've got our uh, developed countries, which are our richest ones. Um, these countries 
good schools, good hospitals, good roads. People generally have enough to eat, that kind of thing. And then we've got, well, we're getting to quite a fat middle over here. Uh, from China down to India, we have emerging countries, which are countries that are getting richer. They're on their way. Lots of factories and businesses, and it's getting there. So over time, what we hope to see is our poorest countries become our richer countries. That's what we want to see, isn't it? So that everyone on Earth is well off and has good schools and hospitals and nice food. Yeah. And yes, and <laughs> uh, rock, rock. Rock is saying that Denmark has 20,000 more pounds e or dollars a year than uh, uh, than, than Britain. Yeah, it's quite quite big, isn't it? Uh, Jay asks, can we do the USA? We will do the USA. It's not on our map yet, but USA is somewhere around the $56,000. So the USA will come in somewhere around here. In fact, I think if I go back, we can see exactly what uh, it is because we we had a quick look at, we compared just America and Mexico last time. So I should be able to find that in the Mexico section. If I zoom in on that. Oh, no, it's more than I thought. It's actually better off than Denmark. Here we go. So this is the USA, $62.8 thousand dollars. So compared to Mexico, that's quite a lot. Nigeria compared to Mexico is down here. So Nigeria would be like this compared to America, which is that. That's quite a big difference roughly sixty thousand dollars per person per year difference makes you think wait real it makes you realize just how rich america really is <laughs> all right now uh, one of the interesting things about nigeria um when it comes to how the population is uh, sorry did i even show you that or did i accidentally find the thing and then oh, it doesn't matter Whew, i don't know I don't know the buttons, eh? Um, uh, ah, that's a good question from Paul here. So Paul says, what will happen to the rich countries if the, oh, hang on, I'm being spammed. Hang on. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Uh, what, what will happen to the rich countries when the poor get rich? That's a good question. Um, a really complicated question too. Uh, in an ideal world, everyone would get rich. Everyone would have what they need and would have a lovely time. More realistically, if we're going to look at it a bit more negatively, um, the reason that the rich countries are rich is because there are other poorer countries which make them stuff without needing much money. Um, so if everyone became so rich, then we might find that, well, there's no one left to do all the boring stuff like grow the rice or dig up the, the minerals from the ground, go mining. Uh, we might find there's no one who's going to fish anymore because everyone wants to get a good job where you don't have to be outside or in the ocean, you know, that kind of thing. So it could get tricky for sure. It'd be a very interesting to see. But yeah, I'm going to look on the positive side. Hopefully everyone just gets uh, just gets better and happier. That's what I'd like. <laughs> um, and yeah, if everyone goes rich, gets rich, Joey says, uh, then the prices would go up. <laughs> yeah, maybe. And you, you, the, the rich people would just become the new poor people, maybe. Yeah, they're not quite so rich. Nah. Yeah. Um, uh, Rock asks, is Greece an emerging country? No, Greece is a developed country. That's uh, sort of at the bottom of our scale of developed, but they, but they are a yeah, developed country. Um, now, this graph here is absolutely amazing. Um, it might not look much to you right now, but it is kind of impressive. Um, this shows the population of Nigeria. You know, I said that it's a country full of babies. This proves it. Um, this is just from a few years ago, three years ago. It's, it's similar now. But uh, the population of Nigeria, we have about, what is that? About 16 on either side. So that's about 32 million people. 32 million people, 32 million people in Nigeria are between the age of zero and four. To get, put that into perspective, in England, there's about 55 million people. Yeah, so imagine that two thirds of England were babies. Babies, babies, I'll say it again, babies. Um, it's kind of amazing. Uh, we add that to that, um, the what 14 on either side so another 28 million people who are below the age of nine that tells us that nigeria has a population of britain as people who are under 10 years old yeah so if it ain't babies it's children um oh ibrahim asked which is the richest country i think the usa is still technically the richest country by gdp per capita 
but I haven't checked, so I don't know. I think it is. Um, it, it depends what metrics, or what, uh, how do I say that? Uh, it depends how you count it. But yes, using our GDP per capita, I believe USA is the richest at the moment. Mm. Um, so what kind of problems would it have having a population that's just made up of children? Um, as you can see, there's very few people who are old. The old people, people in Nigeria don't tend to live that long because it's not a very rich country. Uh, you know, there's a real problem with not having hospitals and things. But that, that tells us <laughs> Rock went straight for child slaves. I wasn't going there. Um, instead, <laughs> it, I, I want to look at this in the way that it's going to be kind of interesting. Yeah, more than half of the population of Nigeria are teenagers or under. So if we go up to like our 15 to 19, you know, more than half the population of Nigeria is in that group. Just imagine all the energy and, uh, I don't know, the, the, the cleverness, the use of computers, whatever you want to look at it. Um, imagine having a country where most people are really young. That could lead to a really bright future, couldn't it? The children, the young people uh, making the, the country and the world uh, a, a far more interesting and exciting place. Um, hopefully, though, they don't let the babies take charge. I don't think they should vote for a baby for president. I think that'd be no good. <laughs> ah, now, and Rock makes a good point. Someday, all of these babies will be old. That's true. So maybe one day we'll see Nigeria as an old population. But most uh, people who look at this, geographers, they say that Nigeria is on its way to becoming the next country to have a billion people. At the moment, there's only two on Earth with a billion people. There is uh, China with about 1.2, 1.3 billion. And then there's uh, India with just over a billion too. Ah, thank you. Ibrahim has found the richest country. It's actually Qatar by GDP. Thank you. Hey, there you are. So Qatar, then Macau, then Luxembourg, then Singapore. <gasps> My goodness, the USA is not even in the top four. <gasps> My goodness, we'll have to get some of those. We'll, we'll do Qatar when we get to Q, because oh, to be honest, I don't have any other ideas. <laughs> so, yeah, it could be interesting that, that there's all these young people, but it could also mean that one day Nigeria is just a humongous country because a lot of those babies in a few years, of course, are going to go on to have their own babies and they'll have their own babies. And if everyone's having loads of babies, it could get interesting. Now, I haven't left much time, have I, for our culture, but there is one piece of culture that I'd like to talk about Nigeria. I mean, maybe two. My favourite is probably the music, because I absolutely love... Uh, Nigeria is big on disco music. Oh, yeah. Uh, lots of nice dance music. Um, lots of funky, funky soul, too. But the thing that I thought I'd focus on mostly is the second biggest film um, industry on the planet. Now, you've probably heard of Hollywood. Hollywood is the famous place in America where they make all the films. That is the third biggest um, Hollywood, uh, well, film producing place on Earth. You've probably heard of Bollywood, which is the one in India. That's the first biggest uh, film producer in the world. All those wonderful films with lots of singing and dancing traditionally. But then in between those two, you have Nollywood which stands for, well, it's the Nigerian version of Hollywood and Bollywood. You just put wood after it and it means films basically nowadays. Yeah. Um, and Nollywood pumps out hundreds of films every year. Um, they're all, they, they maybe are not much like Hollywood films. There's not like lots of special effects and things. Um, and some of them are a little bit basic, but they are all um, interesting with high drama. Um, uh, Nigeria loves soap operas. Think uh, EastEnders, Coronation Street, things like that. There are a lot of very big Nigerian versions of that uh, with lots of people, you know, getting angry at each other and shouting about stuff a lot in the street like they do in British soap operas. I assume they do still. I haven't seen a soap opera for many years. Um, but I, I like this one in particular. This is the film Chicken Madness uh, for all of our chicken fa fans out there in which, uh, well, chickens escape and it gets a bit crazy. Yeah. So, yeah, think, imagine Disney, instead of having cartoon characters, because that's expensive. Nigeria still, remember, a poor country. Um, Nigeria, the, the, the Nigeria film industry, they tend to, and you, you can have a look at some films on YouTube. They're, they're, they're quite incredible. Um, my, one of my favourite is Spider Girl 8, where there's a girl who gets bitten by a spider and she turns into Spider Girl. But instead of having a flashy costume, she's just got, kind of got like what looks like it's been made out of being sewn by a gran 
and yeah it's kind of fun she sort of jumps around pretending to shoot webs at people yeah um but chicken madness um like a lot of nigerian films they're just shot in people's houses you know they don't have big film sets um that there's quite a craze at the moment or, or over the last couple of years of doing uh, films like Game of Thrones, you know, the, where everyone's got like crowns and dragons and stuff, but they can't afford dragons. They can't afford the crowns. So it's just like a guy with a plastic crown saying, I am the king. It's that kind of thing. Um, but that shouldn't really detract from the storylines because they are you know, they're good stories, a lot of them, and interesting films. And just think, uh, imagine a country just pumping out hundreds of films a year. Um, some of them are bound to be pretty good, aren't they? You'd hope. Hmm, there you go so we'll leave it there for today um thank you very much everyone hopefully you have a wonderful christmas and i will see you uh well very soon hopefully um yeah nice uh, hopefully we now know a little bit more about nigeria and yeah if you ever get the chance to go there maybe you can send me a postcard that'd be all right wouldn't it <laughs> all right thank you everybody goodbye